Welcome back, everybody, to another exciting episode of the Much Love Podcast. Today, my guest has worn a lot of hats, but most importantly, he's just a really solid dude. Everyone give a warm welcome to Justin Goodbread. Justin, how are you? I'm good, buddy. How are you doing today, Nate? I'm blessed. I'm absolutely blessed. Um, One of the reasons I wanted to have you on the show is when I was taking my SEPA education, you stood out as the most unique personality of the entire course. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but thank you. <laughs> I think it's a great thing. What what I admired about you just as a man was your clear understanding of who you're for and who you're not for. And that really came across in the way you described yourself. Um, so I'd, I'd love for you to describe yourself as you see yourself to the audience. Sure. That's a powerful question. So born and raised in the country. I live on a dirt road now. I'm just an old country boy is the way I describe myself. Um, no, I'm a father. I'm a husband. I'm a Christian. I'm a business owner, a serial business owner. I've been a business owner for over 30 years. I've had the honor and privilege to work with hundreds, if not thousands of business owners and show them that this thing that we call a business is a catalyst for all of our hopes and dreams, but only not only our hopes and dreams, but we have the honor and privilege to work with employees and vendors and customers and clients. And through our businesses, we can help so many people reach their dreams and aspirations. So whenever I talk about who Justin is, I'm just an old country boy who likes us to reflect to people that, look, your business is an unbelievable gift that's been given to you that you can impact so many lives on this platform that you call a business. That is so much more powerful than looking at a business as just the what of what you do in the day. When you think of the why, the impact on all of the people involved, I think that's such a special way to to think about business. What what has been your journey in business? Because you've owned several. You mentioned you're a serial business owner. Um, Talk to the audience a little bit about what you've done, and then we'll get to where you're at now. Sure. So it's been a fun journey. It's been a tiring journey. I just released a podcast for my own podcast about how business can weather us. I was talking about the gray hair and the wrinkles on my face and so many scars in my emotion. But it all started whenever I was 15 years old. My dad, um, I was getting ready to turn 16. My dad came home. He was an old country boy, born and raised in the South, worked at the Georgia Port Authority, loading corn onto ships that went all around the world. My mom was a nurse, well-educated. And they had this passion. They wanted my my brother, my sister, and I to be business owners versus, as my dad put it, working for the man, his air quotes at the time. And I came home. He came home from work one day. He was tired and sweaty, like most blue collar folk are. And he looked at me. He said, son, you'll be 16 this coming up week. Um, By Friday, if you don't have a job, don't come home. Now, my dad was he was a he was a kind man, but he was firm in his beliefs. And what he was teaching me throughout this week of hardness was that, hey, there's a bigger world that he wanted to expose us to. So he gave me these rules, Nate, which this will all make sense to the audience. But he said, son, you can work for anybody you want to as long as I don't know them, as long as it's not fast food, and as long as it's not a grocery store. Those three things. Okay, well, that seemed pretty easy for me. But, you know, born and raised in the South in a small town and having the last name of Good Bread I've come to find out my dad was very well known as I went around like, hey, do you know my daddy? Right. And they're like, yeah, I knew Alan Goodbread. He's a man of character. He's a good man. And after about four days of me trying to follow his rules, I was defeated on Thursday night and it came home. We had our family dinner. He said, son, how's the job hunt going? I said, daddy, you know, everybody. He said, ah, there's no way I know everybody. I'm like, man, you do. He goes, well, you know, the rule you come uh, if you don't have a job by tomorrow, don't come home. OK. All right. Yes, sir. So that morning, Nate, I got up early. It was Friday morning, very last day. I get up early and he had taken the, the push mower and the gas can and set it on the front, on the driveway. Now we lived in the country, we lived on a long dirt road. Our closest neighbor was a quarter mile, mile and a half away, or half a mile away from us. And so I looked at this. I'm like, I just cut the grass on Thursday or Tuesday, two days before. Why is it out here again? Uh, I'm a little slow again, you know, kind of, kind of raised in the South. And I'm, I'm going to grab a lawnmower and I'm going to drag it until I can find somebody's grass I can cut. That'll count as a job. So I literally drug this, this mower and they all around my little, little community. I'm like, Hey, do you know my dad? Yes, I do. Sorry. Your grass is tall. Good luck to you. Got to an old, an old, older house that had some pretty tall grass, walked up, knocked on the door. His name was Mr. Brown. It's Mr. Brown, man. I need to cut your grass. Do you know my dad? He said, no, I don't know your dad. 
cool. I'm going to cut your grass and pay me whatever you want to pay me. And then I'm done. He's like, sounds fun. So about four hours later, I ended up cutting this two acre plot of St. Augustine grass in South Georgia. And he gave me $40. Never forget this name. I mean, this is 30 years ago, right? He gave me $40. I drug the lawnmower back home. Dad walks in. He said, man, you're clean. You smell good. You must've got a job. I said, well, dad, I'm not sure, but I made $40. He said, how long? Two hours. He sat down Nate beside me. He said, I want you to remember this lesson. I have been working like a dog to feed my family for the last six hours, and you made more in two hours than I made in six. Son, if you learn the, 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 the desire and the benefit and the impact of business, of working for yourself and how you can control your own destiny, but not only for yourself, but for others around you, it'll change your life. Now, that lesson is one that I received at age 15. That led me into a landscape company that was producing multi-million dollars per year that we sold at 23. My wife and I moved to Tennessee where she's from. I started in the finance business. I've since sold three financial firms. I had a business consulting business. I've sold two of those. I've sold a marketing firm. In fact, financially simple, I sold for seven figures a couple of years ago and I just got it back for free. And so I'm relaunching that fun business right now. So my entrepreneur journey has been one of saying that, hey, if there's something I desire, if there's a, if there's a calling that we have in our life, we can can pursue that through this vehicle called business, but not only for ourselves. And this, I think, was where my heart is, and it has been for years. It's not only the, the business world is not only for self gratification, it's so that we can have the honor and privilege to impact our customers, our vendors, our friends, and others, those we have the, inf- the opportunity to meet, much like yourself. Yeah, uh, it's such a powerful lesson your father taught you. You mentioned he worked like a dog his whole life. And showed you in one afternoon, you found a way to make more than he was able to in his career. What gave him the insight to be able to teach you a lesson like that? Oh, that's a powerful question. I've never been asked that before. Um, Mom and dad were simple folk. And they believed they had this thing called faith. They had seen people around them, like any of us, you know, want for our children. I don't know if you're a father, Nate, but I am. I have three children. And I've been, I've often heard it said that there's one person or two people in your life that wants you to do better than them. That's your mother and father. And my mom and dad had gotten, gotten kind of um, indoctrinated through the old Amway, multi-level marketing concept. My mom was a go-getter. My dad knew that there was a better life than what he could achieve. And so both of them sacrificed their whole life to teach us that, hey, you can achieve far greater, not, not necessarily resources or money. That comes naturally by just pursuing your passion, right? But you can achieve much greater and you can leave a legacy. And so their whole purpose in raising my family and myself, the way we were trained, was for them to change the good bread tree. I was the first one to graduate from college, right? In the good bread family. They, so they wanted to change the good bread tree. And all they knew was to read books. All they knew was to listen to people who were successful. And so throughout my high school, I was homeschooled. They hired successful people to teach us, to teach us business. They hired doctors to teach us science. They hired uh, history instructors from the University of Georgia to teach us history lessons in high school with this idea that, hey, if we can position our children to want to love to learn and we can position our children to this idea, that there's a world outside of this, this, engineered engineered system that, hey, I got to go to work and work 40 hours with a man. If we can teach our children this and they can excel, then they can impact the world and leave a legacy and change our good bread name. And they did that. They did that with all three of our kids, my, my brother, my sister and I, and each of us now are, as many would aspire, they're, we're successful business owners. And we have had the honor and privilege to impact thousands of people through our ministries. That's beautiful. One of the things that came to my mind is a similarity in our paths of having done a lot of different things. You know, people will say like, oh, you went from there to there to there, you know, for you, landscaping, finance, marketing, it's all different, right? But I think the core principle or thread for me has always been, it's about helping people. It's about taking what I've learned and wanting to, to give it forward. How did you navigate your career transitions and ultimately wind up doing the type of work you do today? Oh, how to navigate. A lot of times you find yourself through transitions by not your own decision. You build businesses and opportunities abound. For me, I, I, I have to have something big that I'm driving for. So when I had my first landscape business, it was big. It was fun. And then because of racism in my family, my wife who's Filipino and I experienced racism in the deep South that I'd never seen growing up. My mom and dad protected us from that evil and then because of necessity, because I watched my wife get broken because of ignorance, uh, um, people being different, I watched her get broken out as a necessity. I made a change from landscaping 
into a different career. Now, whenever I moved to Tennessee, did I expect to go into finance? No, I didn't want to be in the stock bond world. I, I hated the whole pro that whole world, but I learned through planning that I could change things. So to navigate from one to the other was because candidly, because of racism. And then because of opportunities and knowing how business moves, I had the opportunity to exit my land, my financial firms and come into the marketing firms and marketing world, coaching world, the business, the, the business world, the public speaking world, which is truly a passion. I think the harder question is not how did I navigate, but how do we find our passion in life, right? I believe each of us are uniquely and wonderfully made. I believe that God has equipped each of us for what he's, what he's prepared for us. I believe that with all my heart, but so oftentimes, me and my eagerness and my lack of patience, I want to know what tomorrow is today, right? I want to see the success today instead of waiting through the, the school of life that we often go through. And so I think for me throughout the various journeys and the changes and everything, it was this whole aspiration of I want to impact. That's my key word for my own life. I want to impact as many people as possible. I have this saying that for those who listen to my podcast, reading my books, I really believe the cemetery is the saddest place in the world, not because someone has died, but because there's a wealth of wisdom that often is left on the field. They, they, they didn't pass on that wisdom to many, many people who could, who could glean from it. It's been said that somebody else's experience is a better teacher than our own. So for me, it's about, man, whenever my time comes, whenever that is, did I do everything in my life to impact my family, my friends, the people I had the honor and privilege to meet? Did I do everything to inspire them to say, hey, I can achieve more than I'm thinking I can right now. I can think bigger than I'm thinking I can right now. If Justin Goodbread, who's born and raised in the South, lives on a dirt road, currently lives on a dirt road, can, can walk through seven business transactions, if I can be financially independent by the by early 30s, if I can have an eight-figure exits whenever I'm in my 40s, if that is possible from an old country boy, then... Man, anybody can achieve their wildest dreams if we can just simply identify what it is that we believe we should accomplish in our life and then walk toward that. Friends, I think right now the passion is going to be we can do it. Again, if I can do it, anybody can do it. So the navigation happens as long as we stay focused on what is our calling, what is our purpose in life. I can feel the impact exuding from you. It's not just a word you put on a piece of paper. It's clearly the way you're living life. I want to go back to something you said, though, about your first business transition, experiencing racism in the South and how that specifically affected your marriage. Um, I'm in an interracial marriage myself. Um, I'm Jewish. My wife is black. And there have been things that have come up along the way that I was not expecting. Yeah. As it relates to your marriage, what were some of those things? And more importantly, how, how have you guys built a system that allows you to, to transcend those issues today? Wow, that is a powerful question, Nate. Man, I'm I'm humbled I even get to answer that question. Emily and I fell in love in a long distance relationship. We saw each other six times before we got married. Um, she is the she is everything to me. You know, in the early days, you see somebody and you fall in love with them physically, emotionally, spiritually, all these things. But as I watched Emily through that particular moment where this individual did what he did and it caused immense pain. I watched almost like a soul being sucked out of another human. I watched how, I don't use the word evil and ignorance, people just being different for whatever reason, because maybe it's religious, maybe it's uh, skin color, whatever it is. Um, I watched how it crushed her. Again, I never seen this. And I knew that it wasn't right. But I knew I wanted to protect her, but not only, not only protect her, but protect others. So the way we had to deal with this, the first thing we did is we moved ourselves from the circumstances because in, in, a, in various parts of the country, there are many ignorant people that like to attack and they like to belittle people so they can alienate themselves. So we changed it. We changed the location, which was needed. And then we, we, we began talking about it openly. We began talking about her culture. I, I learned the Filipino culture is, is very interesting. She, she had a grandmother who was a matriarchal of the family. Her grandmother, they would literally would make this as Filipino dishes, which were amazing to eat, but she wouldn't sit at the table with us. She would sit behind me. And, and whenever I finished, you know, rice noodles or whatever, she would come with another plate and just another spoonful and just dop it on the plate in front of us. It was a very interesting culture. And so I had to learn real quick through the cultural diversities that, number one, don't eat all your pieces of food first. If you leave a section of the egg roll left, if not, you're going to get two more on your plate and you're going to be full. 
So I learned the cultural diversities, but then I also learned for them myself that each of us have an amazing opportunity to impact others through our own education, through our own experience. So as Emily and I have dealt with racism multiple times now throughout life, as you call it, interracial marriage, um, by any means, people where I grew up would call my marriage an interracial marriage. Um, but it's been fun to learn and be able to talk through it and talk openly about it. The, hey, she, she's a person. I'm a person. We dealt with in reverse racism, right? So oftentimes we talk white on whatever the color or denomination or, or sexual preference is. But it was actually reversed whenever I, as the as the white Southerner, moved to Tennessee and got into this Filipino community. It was the opposite type of a racism. Nothing that, you know, we couldn't handle, but it was people are different and that's OK. Let's let's embrace the diversity. I, I think Nate, whenever we whenever we, you know, the old saying birds with a feather flock together, whenever we all stay within our own ecosystem, we get into an echo chamber and we really don't learn life. There's an abundant world out there and God's created us all uniquely and wonderfully for his purpose and his calling. And if we can learn what each of us bring to the table, and as I often teach my son, chew on the meat, spit out the bones, look at the positive within people and, you know, realize that each of us have a lot to do, lots of, a lot of growing to do, that we can all help each other and succeed to where whatever our goals and aspirations are. You're definitely right about that. It takes a variety of people to to bring the right perspective to a table for an organization to thrive. So I've always believed in cultural diversity within a business. I think diversity, equity, and inclusion, when you get outside of the more leftist, Marxist, communist rhetoric, and you think more about the, the true belonging, the true just good business strategy of getting as many people involved as possible, those principles are really, really important. To, to take it down a step a little bit, not not to be quite so heavy, um, you also talked about a, a great love of college football. So today I wore my Clemson National Championship pullover. Um, you're a Bulldogs fan, correct? I am. I'm a Georgia Bulldog. But I can remember going to the foot Georgia Bulldog game back in the 80s when Herschel Walker was running on the field. So, I mean, a long, long time ago. So I've been a Bulldog for years, even when they were not very good. Now they seem to be dominating in some places, except for Alabama kicking our tail every once in a while. You know, we, we enjoy we enjoy some football around our family. Well, and I'd say you guys have been probably within the top three programs in the SEC consistently for as long as I've really been paying attention. I think there's there's programs that emerge here and there, but it's really been Alabama, LSU, in in Georgia to me. Yeah, I think you're right. What's interesting about that is leadership, right? You watch a coach like Coach Sanders, who came into you know Colorado this year, and the leadership that he's positioning and the inspiration. I think that you know we we as business owners can take a lot of the college world, we can take a lot of life and apply it to our business. You know, we talk about diversity, we talk about leadership. The reality is, is that if we're going to achieve our aspirations as business owners, we can glean wisdom from every aspect. Football, for example, look at what Kirby Smart has done. Look at what Coach Sanders did in those various areas and how they spoke life into the players, aligned the players for one destination, for one calling. You can do that with a diverse group of people as they do in football on a regular basis. Various backgrounds come together, various beliefs come together for a common goal, and that is to put that pigskin in the opposing opponent's end zone, right, and ultimately try to win the national championship if on college. I think the same thing is true for us in business, is if we can get crystal clear on what we're trying to achieve, Nate, crystal clear then the transitions that we spoke about earlier are easy. The changes are easy. The, the motivation, the inspiration, all that we deal with is really easy. This game of business that wears so many people out becomes super simple and fun to play, just like this game of football. If we can simply put a destination, a goal, something that's achievable, something that's bigger than we might imagine, and then get buy-in from our family because they're along the game with us nonstop, our friends, our employees, our clients, our customers, et cetera. So, yeah, I love football because I love how it teaches me about what my passion is and how I can continue to pursue my goals. Something we have in common is we've both sold businesses. I built and sold a marketing agency. And one of the ways I celebrated that is my wife and I, for an anniversary gift to ourselves, we bought a massage chair. And I've always wanted a, a real top of the line massage chair. Ever since I was a little kid, I'd go to the mall and I'd sit in the massage chairs while my mom and my grandma shopped. And now it felt nice to be able to do that for ourselves. Is there something that you and your wife have done for your family as ways to celebrate exits? I mean, I'm not saying, you know, you go out and like, you know, buy a plane or something, but just something that was fun that meant something to you. You know, the the first 20 years of our marriage, we've been married just over 20 some odd years now. I'd say the first 15 years of our marriage was tough. 
it was tough. As any business owner who's listening to me, you you know what it's like to eat beans and rice, as the old saying goes, right? We had the car we called the prayer mobile that we held together literally with duct tape, right? I had employees that were making two and three times the income that I was making because we were driving to this business. And and even then, throughout the business world, throughout the time that we've grown the company, my family suffered. I'm looking now back in pictures, Nate, over the last 20 some odd years. And there are times whenever my kids were tiny, they don't remember the pictures. I don't remember the pictures. And my wife's like, yeah, you don't remember when we did this? I'm like, I honestly don't. I don't remember that. I wasn't present consciously in those time periods. So when we had our, when we had our eight figure exit a couple of years back, you know, I was teaching my, through my podcast, Hey, you can build a business. I was walking my, our audience along the journey of, Hey, watch what we're doing in our business. You can do this. Let me teach you how you can have value acceleration in your company, how you can grow your business for an eight, nine figure exit. And whenever we went through our transition, um, the exit two years ago, we made some major changes. I took a lot of time and traveled. We took a three week, uh, three week car ride around the West Coast of the United States, right? And just hotel to hotel, no real agenda. I mean, from somebody who's had a life of following a calendar for 20 years, not having an, a destination or a clear agenda was like liberating to me. We've celebrated through many, many, many trips. We've gone internationally because we haven't traveled, right? We haven't done these things for so long. My family, friends, we go on these very, in these trips, you know, to various locations throughout the tropics. And here we are, we're traveling to grandma's house, right? Because we're broke because we're running a business and we're building everything back into this company. So for us, it was to, um, it was our celebration was to travel. Our celebration was to take some time off. Our celebration was to do some things around the farm that we wanted to do to, to enhance. We bought a ton of real estate that we wanted to buy, and it's just changing the the shape of our life. It's been kind of fun to walk through the eggs and to see how, you know, perseverance and determination can lead to your ultimate goals. One of the things you said I really related to was seeing pictures and not remembering it happening or not being present while it occurred. One of the things that I've learned through couples therapy and individual therapy is this idea that my emotional nature is to repress and suppress my emotions during painful situations. So it's almost like I take my emotions, my feelings, I put them in a box, put them on a shelf. I'll deal with that later. Let me get through. Let me follow the plan of action. Um, but now I, I try to be more present and aware with my family. Um, did you go through any any sort of emotional awakening or some sort of spiritual reconciliation during that time of just being with family without an agenda? I don't think during that time, I will tell you that we had a seven year period of our life where God wrecked us. He put us through over the coals, man. Uh, we had multiple miscarriages of the third trimester. I was dealing with a lawsuit that we, we were financially independent. And then this lawsuit came from a business dealing that turned sideways and we were broke again. We ended up going back in debt almost for facing bankruptcy. I can remember trying to, I remember looking inside the cabinet saying, I don't know what we're going to eat tonight and doing the best I could. That's where two of my businesses that I started in the midst of this turmoil, ended up selling them for a lot of money. It was fun. Came out of necessity. So I can remember going through the seven years of, I call it tribulation. It was just God taking me to the woodshed. As I, in that time period, it was a survival instinct. What do I have to do to feed my family? What do I have to do to make sure we're okay financially so that we can keep the roof over our head? Now that time passed. Everything's a season, right? There's a time to weep and a time to, to laugh, right? That was a time of deep suffering. The seven years following that was a time of abundance. And during that time of abundance, yes, I can remember that time period. I can remember very clearly how hard it was. But candidly, I remember saying, I remember saying, I'm not going to let the past define my future. I'm not going to allow this, this hardship. Yes, it was hard, but I, I got to get past this. In fact, I don't even want to remember the details of it. I can remember today, I remember it was a very tough time. But if you were to ask me the details of it, I couldn't tell you because my focus became, yes, we're all going to go through these seasons. We're all going to go through these hard times in our life that ultimately God is creating us for what he's created for us, that he's going to, he's building us and he's shaping us for this unbelievable journey, unbelievable destination of the future. And if I live in the past, I'll never think big enough to obtain what I believe is my future. I'll become confident in my past and be the, oh, I remember when person, as opposed to here's where I'm going. I heard John Maxwell recently, who's, I think he's in his eighties now, please forgive me if he's not, but I, he's, he's, he's of course a little older than I am. And I can remember him saying that I am excelling more now than I have been in the past. 
And what he's done is he's realized that everything in life has been almost like a Tetris block. It's building up to a magnificent crescendo. It's building up to a magnificent climax. So even though, yes, I went through some hard times, even though, yes, we dealt with racism, even though, yes, I've sold seven businesses, even though, and add some things behind it, each of us can put the list of things behind us. The reality is, is we're in the present. Everything has made us who we are today. We're the sum total of the choices that we've made in our life and the opportunities that we've capitalized on today. That's who we are. And if we're not happy with where we're at today, we can change it. That's amazing. We live in the United States of America. We can set our own destination. If I'm not happy with who I am today, I can change it. If I don't like the destination I'm going toward, I can change it. If I need to make some strives for education, for experience, for knowledge, whatever it may be to carry out a future destination, I could do that. So to me, everything has been this building block to this point. And if you ask me, I hope in 10 years, it's going to be the same thing. I am pressing forward to a destination so that I can impact millions of people to say, hey, there is this journey that you're on that is, even though it's tough, even though it's hard, even sometimes it sucks, it's okay. We can leave it on the field. We can impact the people around us and we can add encouragement, help others receive everything in life they want to receive. That's the, that's who I am, man. I, I, so all the experiences, yeah, you had them. Yeah, they were, some of them sucked, a lot of good things. I can look back in pictures, remember some things. But now it's like, I'm here today. I'm living from this point forward. How can I impact my family? What can I do tomorrow that I maybe left in the background in the past? Beautiful. Being here today, what is it that you're focusing most of your time and effort on? I know you mentioned you made some upgrades around the farm, um, but it also sounds like you got one of those businesses back how are you how are you spending life today yeah it's i mean i'm excited i'm more excited today than i have been at any time in my career i, I actually was speaking to the podcast on one of the pre uh, two episodes ago and saying i know clearly today why i was placed on earth it's clearly today I couldn't answer that question a year ago. The last two years have, you know, some of businesses two years ago, I stepped into a president role of a national company and worked as a shareholder, key shareholder in the company, but as an employee. And I wasn't doing the creativity that I love to do, the things that I love to speak in. I wasn't able to speak into the lives of the people that I had the privilege of talking to. So I was able to acquire back Financially Simple, which was my media company. It was my education platform. I think we have over 500 podcasts. I think there's, you know, uh, 2000 blog posts. There's hundreds of hours of content that are out there that I was able to sell for seven figures and get it back for free, which was cool. So now I'm, a, now I'm taking this business and I'm bringing the audience on a journey. We relaunched the podcast January 1st. We changed it from Financially Simple to the Justin Goodbread Show. We're bringing along this, this, this audience into the position saying, look, I've been teaching you how to do this. Here's how you build a business. Here's how you accelerate to eight figures or nine figures. Here is how you get your team involved. Now we're changing around and saying, I'm going to do it all over again. I'm going to show you how easy this is. So the Financially Simple Experience, where now we, we, we launched the podcast again. We launched a YouTube channel. We're soon going to be showing our metrics, show how it was destroyed of the last two years by the people who bought it, where we have it at. And then I'm going to walk the audience through the journey on, hey, we're producing $42 a month right now. <laughs> it's exciting. $42 of total revenue. But if you watch... I can tell you, Nate, that within two to three years, we're going to have six figures plus per month of revenue in this company because this business is simple and it's all about knowing your destination and backwards engineering. And then I'm going to take all the principles I've been teaching for the last seven years, hundreds of hours, books upon books we've written. I'm going to take those principles and live it and let hopefully others see this journey and motivate and inspire them, inspire an audience of business owners who may find themselves tired. They find themselves starting over like myself in a good way. They find themselves going through a hard time. Now they're starting over in a bad way. I want to take this journey, this life that I've lived, 30 years of business knowledge, seven exits, top awards in the country. I want to take this and show people that, hey, it's not hard. You can do this. And I want to live this out. I hope the audience that my audience will continue to journey. We have hundreds of thousands of people that follow us. I'm hoping they can get motivated and inspire. So my words for this season that I'm in is I want to in encourage people. Uh, I hope I do that daily. I want to encourage people because we, life is hard. It is, but life is good. So I want to encourage people. I want to inspire people to think bigger than they've ever thought before. I made a comment to my, to my wife. I'm like, wouldn't it be amazing? In fact, uh, I said that. I said, time out. This is going to happen. She's like, okay. I said, I want to take our annual income and make it a monthly income. She goes, okay. 
Why can't we do it? So I want to inspire people to think bigger, and then I want to educate people. I love teaching. I love showing people you can do this. Again, if an old country boy born and raised on a dirt road in South Georgia swamp and lives on a dirt road in Tennessee can do some of the things that I've been privileged and God's allowed me to do, none of us have an excuse. <laughs> so that's where, my, that's where my heart is right now. There's going to be a lot of great resources in the description where you could follow Justin's podcast. You can connect with a lot of his top content on where to get started. So I'm looking forward to seeing what your impact is on my audience. Uh, one question I want to ask you that I ask everybody, if you could meet anybody, who would it be and why? Oh, wow. I have three people, three people I want to meet. Um, Dave Ramsey. I know he's only a stone from my office. In fact, I told my wife many times that I'm going to go drive and just sit there until he walks out. Why do I want to meet Dave Ramsey? Because I took his principles from the young age and applied them in my family. And it led me to financial independence in my early thirties. Dave Ramsey, number one, Robert Kiyosaki, number two, they're totally opposite in their beliefs. I took Robert Kiyosaki's principle and applied it in my business world. And Robert Kiyosaki's principles took what Dave was teaching me on a personal level and it made my businesses where I could sell them for eight figures. So Robert Kiyosaki, number two, and then Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V, as we call him. Gary V's book, Crushing It, changed my life. I was in Texas and I was reading this book and I can remember reading it on an airplane. I'm a speed reader, so I read really fast and I was internalizing this book. I went and met with somebody, come back to the Texas airport, I think it was Dallas airport, and I'm sitting there and there was a statement that was not in the book, but as he was writing, it said, I, I heard this, maybe it's a prompting, why not me? Why not me? Why can't I impact millions of people? If that's in my heart, why not? And it was this, this idea of, well, I'm a country boy. I was born and raised on a dirt road, right? I'm just, I'm a little slow sometimes. I'm not the sharpest person. I'm not the most talented. I'm not the most, the best spoken person. I, all these excuses, right? That each of us face our anxiety that we have. I can remember sitting there reading and saying, why not me? And as I flew from, I think it was Dallas to Knoxville on that plane ride, which is two and a half hours or so. I landed, I called my wife and I said, life's fixing to change. I'm going to take now, again, we were already financially successful because of Dave's teaching. Our business was rocking it because of Robert Kiyosaki's principles. And I was like, why can't, I called Emily. I said, Emily, I know I just landed. I want you to hear this. I've been listening. I've been reading this guy named Gary Vaynerchuk. He makes some very good, interesting statements. I'm going to apply it and we're going to see what happens. Those three men, because of their selflessness, have impacted my family forever. Those would be the three people I'd want to sit down and have coffee with. What a beautiful converging of ideas and mindsets. And I think the biggest thing about that is it showed me your ability to grok a bunch of different personalities into one thing that works for you. Like the epitome of take what you want and leave the rest. I think it's beautiful. Um, if there's anything you want the audience to walk away from with this show, what, what would you have for them? You know, we were created uniquely. I believe that, Nate, with all my passion, all my heart. The What your experience is, Nate, in your life, through your lens, what it has been is preparing you for something that is will blow your mind. I can't wait to see your future 10, 15, 20 years from now. There is an amazing future for each of us. The reality is, is that I've said the word a few times now, anxiety or fear is going to hold us. But what if, what if these people think that, hey, I'm just a dumb hick from the hills of Tennessee, right? What if, what if? The reality is, is that in order for us to reach everything that we desire, everything that God's placed in our heart, it's going to take just a little bit of faith. It's going to take a little bit of vulnerability. It's going to take a little bit of, I don't know where I'm going, but I'm going to make this next step. It's going to take a little bit of, it'll be okay. And it's going to take a lot of grit. But the reality is, is that each of us have this passion. Each of us have a desire. Each of us can see ourselves somewhere else or in a different position than where we are today, mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally, whatever it may be, you can achieve it. If you think you can or think you can't, you're right. So what I would say is, is that, Man, if you feel depressed, if you feel like this, I have not lack of clarity, tune into these channels. Tune into people that can speak into your life, that can motivate you, that can inspire you, that can educate you to your desired outcome. It can be achieved. Again, if a country boy from East Tennessee can do what I've had the honor and privilege to do, anybody can do some things. 
Well, Justin, you sure make it sound easy. We know it's difficult, but it's not complicated. It's simple. Follow what Justin's doing on his show. And if you're looking to make a change in your life, whether it's grow your business or transform some things personally for you, I think there's a lot of principles from this episode you can apply. Uh, Justin, I really appreciate you making time today. And for everybody who tuned in, much love. 